Hey, everyone. Um, so hopefully by now you're tired of looking at waterfalls, so I'm not going to bore, bore you with any more of those. And I was actually kind of thrilled to see that you guys voted for the favorite ops tool as being TCP dump, because that lines up really well with what I wanted to show off. Um, so in web page test for probably three or four years now, we've had the ability to do TCP dumps. Uh, if you go into the advanced settings uh, right down here, there's a capture a TCP dump with your test. I highly recommend it, especially if you're going to be calling out a vendor or calling out uh, an ops team or something like that. It's really good to actually have a packet capture to make sure what you're saying is really happening. Uh, it's not unusual, for example, for a browser. Um, so the way web page test works, to get the data, it, it logs when the browser reads the data or writes the data to the network. If you're running a script, for example, that's blocking the browser from doing anything else, it might make it look like, hey, how come it took three seconds to connect to that server? Well, it's because your JavaScript's in a tight loop, not letting the browser realize that it connected. And before you go yell at somebody about it, you might want to make sure that's actually happening. Otherwise, they're going to yell back at you and go, and I don't believe you. And everyone believes packet captures. So if you're going to share it, share a packet capture. And one of the things that's made web page tests really successful is that everything is built for sharing. Your test results are in permanent URLs. Your waterfalls are permanent URLs. You can email it around and tell people, hey, look at this. And one of the things that had me really excited this last year was there was a company called CloudShark. I'm not sure if you've heard of them yet, but they have a hosted version of Wireshark, which lets you share packet captures, which is like totally freaking awesome. Um, so we went ahead. They have a real simple API. And in web page tests now, when you have a packet capture as part of your test, you'll get a view next to the TCP dump link that will let you open it up directly in CloudShark. For example, here. It's a packet capture in CloudShark of CNN.com loading. And a couple of things that I really like to do with TCP dumps, uh, when you're probing your servers, for example, to try and figure out what are the configs and stuff, so we've been talking about initial congestion window for several years now, went from 2 to 4 to 10. What's your config on your servers, your load balancers, or whatever? A really easy way to check, probe for that, in web page test, you can go in and set custom connectivity parameters. And I usually like to do really, really big bandwidth. Well, not really big for what you guys are used to, but 100 megabit or so and really long latency, so a second worth of latency. That makes it really easy to see the packet round trips when you're looking in a packet capture. Capture a TCP dump, load it up, filter it, look for your HTTP. OK, here's the request for the base page. Oh, sorry, too used to Wireshark. Uh, let's narrow it down to just that stream. And I'll cheat a little bit, because I have it ignoring packets smaller than 60 bytes just to get rid of the ax, because they kind of cloud it up a little bit. So you get to see all of the, the back and forth traffic for that one HTTP request to that one server. And over here, if you look at the times, since we have a one second round trip, it makes it really easy to see what comes in each round trip. So six, six seconds in, the request went out. Seven seconds in, data started coming back. And we have one, two, three, four four packets, 1,500 bytes. OK, your initial congestion window is four. You might want to update the load balancers or the servers and get that up to 10 so you can send more of the data out, because otherwise it's taking a whole other round trip before the rest of your data for your base page starts to come back. Uh, one of the things you want to be pretty careful about when you're doing this is uh, if you're doing flushing early and you're not sending a whole bunch of data back, you have to make sure you have at least enough data on the wire to see the full round trips for your initial congestion window. That's one of the really useful things. And then when you have it all filtered, you take the URL, you share it with someone. You don't have to say, here's a packet dump, do this filtering, load it up in Wireshark. You just say, here's the URL of what I'm talking about. And really quickly, one of the other things, um, Will Chan had a really good blog post about this maybe about a week ago. Um, and a really good demonstration of buffer bloat and why a combination of TCP initial congestion window 10, lots of sharding, and low bandwidth are a really bad combination. So be really careful about sending too much wire on the data, especially for your low bandwidth people. This is an extreme case. Um, he picked on Etsy. I took his exact same picking, but it's not unique to Etsy. Uh, they just happen to have some really good sharding going on for some of the image search. 
and configured it for dial-up, 56K. OK, so no one's really going that slow anymore, or not a whole lot of people. But it demonstrates really well. Load it up into TCP dump, and, or Cloud Shark, and they have some graphs that you can plot out. Let's load it in an editor. OK, so that's the overall bandwidth. OK, so you pretty much expect it to be pegged. But you can do some pretty cool things. First, let's look at the TCP data, tcp.analysis.retransmission. You can see what all the retransmits are. And if I spell correctly, oh, yeah, thank you. OK, so all of the red in there is retransmission. So about half of the bandwidth for this guy was in retransmitted packets. OK, well, maybe there was a lot of packet loss going on because it's a really slow connection. TCP analysis, spurious retransmission. Yeah, here, I'll even cheat more. There, I've got it preloaded. <laughs> So I'll, I'll share the link to this one so you don't have to remember how to type all of these. Um, so the green line on here is retransmissions where the entire packet was completely duplicate data that actually arrived at some point earlier because it got stuck in network buffers somewhere. So with lots of sharding, lots of data on the wire, low bandwidth connections, it gets even worse because you're using up half of the low bandwidth retransmitting data that they already got. So that's pretty much it. So I strongly encourage everyone, play with packet dumps, TCP dumps, get familiar with it. The dev side needs to understand it so you can talk to the ops teams and with your vendors about what's going on. And it's a really cool way to share them. So, thanks. <laughs>